Unit 1-4 is all about measuring angles. Read the learning goal and find where you are on the scale before we start the lesson. An angle is formed by two rays with the same endpoint. We can name an angle in three ways. The first way is by its vertex letter. So here we would call this angle A. The second way is by a point on each ray and the vertex. So here we could call this angle BAC or we could go backwards angle CAB. Note that the vertex letter is always in the middle. The last way to name an angle is by a number, so this would be called angle 1. When you name an angle using the three points, again, please remember the vertex letter always is in the middle. The interior of an angle is the region containing all the points between the two sides of the angle. So here's my angle sides. This is the interior of the angle. The exterior of an angle is the region containing all the points outside of the angle. So again, here's my angle. This is the exterior outside of those rays. Example 1 asks, what are two other names for angle 1? Here is angle 1. Note we cannot use the vertex letter this time because the vertex is shared by three angles. The largest one and angle 1 and angle 2 all have M as its vertex letter. So we're going to use points J, the vertex letter M, and point K for one way to name angle 1. The second way would be to go backwards and call this angle K, M, J. Okay, now pause the video and do you try number 1. Let's check your answers. Part A asks, what are two other names for angle K, M, L? Well, here is angle K, M, L. So again, we can't use the vertex letter because it shares two other angles. So let's start with angle LMK. We'll just go backwards. And we've got that 2 inside the angle, so we will call it angle 2. For part B, it says, would it be correct to name any of the angles angle M? Explain. Again, because M is shared by three angles, we cannot just say angle M. If I did, I would have no way of knowing which of the three angles I were referring to. So no, we cannot use angle M to name any of those angles. The protractor postulate states that every point on each ray of an angle can be paired with a real number from 0 to 180 along a protractor. Since a circle has 360 degrees, each degree of a protractor is 1 360th of a circle. Since a protractor forms half a circle, it measures angles from 0 to 180 degrees. We measure the size of an angle in degrees. To indicate the measure of an angle, we'll write a lowercase m in front of the angle symbol. In the diagram, the measure of angle A is 62. To write this by saving time and space, we want to use the measure of angle A equals 62. The protractor postulate allows you to find the measure of an angle. Look at the diagram. The measure of angle COD is the absolute value of the difference of the real numbers paired with ray OC, so here at 45, and ray OD here at about 148. That is, if ray OC corresponds with C here, and ray OD corresponds with D, then the measure of angle COD is the absolute value of the difference of C and D. Typically, we'd put one of the rays when we were measuring an angle at zero, so we don't have to use that absolute value of the difference. We can classify angles according to their measures. An acute angle has a measure of between zero and 90 degrees. A right angle has a measure of exactly 90 degrees. An obtuse angle has a measure between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, and a straight angle is exactly 180 degrees. This symbol lets us know that we are talking about a 90 degree or right angle. Example 2 asks, what are the measures of angle LKN, angle JKL, and angle JKN? Classify each angle as acute, right, obtuse, or straight. Let's take a look at angle LKN. Here is angle LKN. If you notice, 
ray kn lines up with zero on the inside ring of the protractor. So if I follow the inside ring over to where ray kl crosses the protractor at 145, the measure of angle LKN would be 145. Since that measure is greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees, that is an obtuse angle. Let's look at angle JKL. Here is angle JKL. Notice ray KJ goes through 90 degrees on the inside and outside ring of the protractor. Let's look over at ray KL. It crosses through 145 on the inside ring and 35 on the outside ring. Let's use the smaller numbers. Since neither ray points to zero on either side of the protractor, we're going to have to use the absolute value of the difference of both of those numbers. So the measure of angle JKL will equal the absolute value of the difference between 90 and 35. 90 minus 35 is 55, and the absolute value of 55 is 55. So the measure of angle JKL is 55. Since 55 is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees, angle, JK, angle JKL is acute. Now let's look at angle JKN. Here is angle JKN. Again, ray KJ points to 90 on the protractor, both the inside and outside ring, and ray KN points to 0. So we know that from 0 to 90, that the measure of angle JKN is 90. Since the angle measure is exactly 90 degrees, angle JKN is a right angle. Now pause the video and do you try number 2. Okay, let's check your answers. Let's look for angle LKH. Here is angle LKH. Notice that ray KH goes through zero and ray KL goes through 35 on the outside ring. So the measure of angle LKH is 35. Since that is less than 90 degrees but more than zero, it is an acute angle. Let's look at angle HKN. So here is angle HKN. Notice on the inside ring, ray KH is at 180 degrees. And if I follow that around on the inside ring to ray KN, it is at zero. So, measure of angle HKN is 180 degrees. Since it is exactly 180 degrees, that is a straight angle. Finally, let's take a look at angle MKH. Here is angle MKH. Since H is at zero, uh, ray KH is at zero on the outside ring, we follow that around on the outside ring, angle KM is at 145 degrees. So the measure of angle MKH is, for, is 145. Since this is greater than 90 degrees but less than 180, angle MKH is an obtuse angle. Angles with the same measure are congruent angles. This is the symbol we use for congruent. This means that if the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B, then angle A is congruent to angle B. The converse is also true. That means if we say angle A is congruent to angle B, then their measures are going to be equal. You can mark angles with arcs to show they are congruent. If there's more than one set of congruent angles, each set is marked with the same number of arcs. Let's take a look. Here, angle BAJ has one arc, it is congruent to angle DFE also with one arc. Next, angle CBJ is marked with two arcs, it is congruent to angle FHG here with two arcs. And finally, angle BJA marked with three arcs is congruent to angle FJH also with three arcs. Let's take a look at example three. 
Here, synchronized swimmers form angles with their bodies, as shown in the photo. If the measure of angle GHJ equals 90 degrees, what is the measure of angle KLM? Well, here is angle GHJ. It has two arcs in it. So we want to compare that to angle KLM, which also has two arcs. That means these two angles are congruent. Since angle GHJ has a measure of 90 degrees, angle KLM would have the exact same measure. So the measure of angle KLM is 90. Pause the video and do you try number three. Let's check your answer. If the measure of angle ABC is 49, what is the measure of angle DEF? Notice each angle has one arc. That means the measure of angle ABC is equal to the measure of angle DEF. If the measures of the angles are equal, then the angles are congruent. Therefore, the measure of angle DEF is also 49. The angle addition of postulate is very similar to the segment addition postulate. It says if point B is on the interior of angle AOC, then the measure of angle AOB plus the measure of angle BOC will equal the entire measure of angle AOC. Example 4 asks, if the measure of angle RQT equals 55, then what are the measure of angle RQS and angle TQS? Well, let's use the angle addition postulate to write an equation. Next, let's substitute 4x minus 20 in for the measure of angle RQS, 3x plus 14 in for the measure of angle TQS, and 55 in for the measure of angle RQT. 4x plus 3x is 7x, and negative 20 and 14 is negative 6. So that will equal 155 degrees. If we add 6 to both sides, 7x will equal 161. Now, if we divide both sides by 7, x will equal 23. To find the measure of angle RQS and the measure of angle TQS, we want to substitute 23 in for x into both expressions. So 4 times 23 is 92, minus 20 is 72. The measure of angle RQS is 72. 3 times 23 is 69 plus 14 is 83. So the measure of angle TQS is 83. Now let's do a quick check. Is 72 plus 83 155? Since it is, we know we have solved this problem correctly. Now pause the video and do you try number four. Let's check. If the measure of angle DEF is a straight angle, that means it's 180 degrees. So what are the measure of angle DEC and the measure of angle CEF. I know if I add the two angles together, I'm going to get 180 degrees. So let's start by writing that equation. Now let's substitute 11x minus 12 in for the measure of angle DEC and 2x plus 10 in for the measure of angle CEF. Finally, let's substitute 180 in for the measure of angle DEF. Now let's combine like terms. 11x plus 2x is 13x and negative 12 and positive 10 is negative 2. That will equal 180. If I add 2 to both sides, I will get 13x equal to 182. If I divide both sides by 13, then x will equal 14. To find the measure of angle DEC and the measure of angle CEF, we want to substitute 14 into each of the expressions where we see x. The measure of angle DEC equals 11 times 14, which is 154, minus 12, which will give us 142. So the measure of angle DEC is 142. The measure of angle CEF is 2 times 14, which is 28, plus 10, which is 38. Let's check by adding. Is 142 plus 38 180? Since it is, we know we are correct. Now take a few minutes to complete the lesson check. Go ahead and check your answers. If you missed any, these are the questions you'll ask tomorrow in class. If you're feeling like you really rocked this lesson, do the challenge. Where are you on the scale for the learning goal now?